My name is Crystal Smith, a member of Lutheran Church of the Good Shepherd in Hazelwood, Missouri. I'm here to welcome you from my home to your home as you join us for family to family worship. Today's service is led by Pastor Linda and families from our congregation. We now invite you into this blessed time with God as we worship together online. We begin today by calling upon the presence of God. We are promised that when two or three are gathered in Christ's name, that God in all of God's power will be with us. And so we begin in the name of God the Creator, Jesus our Savior, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God abounding in steadfast love toward us, healing the sick and raising the dead, showering us with every good gift. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. A moment of silence. Just and gracious God, we come to you for healing and life. Our sins hurt others and diminish us. We confess them to you. Our lives bear the scars of sin. We bring these also to you. Show us your mercy, O oh God. Bind up our wounds. Forgive us our sins and free us to love, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Apostle Paul assures us, when we were dead in our trespasses, God made us alive together with Christ, nailing the record of our sins to the cross. Jesus says to you, 
your sins are forgiven. Be at peace and tell everyone how much God has done for you. Amen. Amen. Our Gospel reading for today, the 10th Sunday after Pentecost, comes from the 6th chapter of St. John. Glory to you, O Lord! So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. When Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it was my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Those who come to me shall never hunger, and they who believe in me shall never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Hi, I'm Pastor Linda. I'm so glad to be with you today to think together about the Word of God that we have. We are in the sixth chapter of John. It's something that's gone on in churches for hundreds of years that at this time in the Gospel of Mark, we switch to John for five weeks. And five weeks are in one chapter, and that chapter is about Jesus being the bread of life. And, and they're harder, we have to work harder, not only for the message that I preach, but also for the way that we follow Jesus and believe. And so that's what we'll be about today. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you so much for life. Thank you that you are always life. Thank you that you sent Jesus to bring us life. Thank you that this life for us, who are the Gentiles that we receive in this second covenant, where Jesus becomes the body and the blood, the sacrificial lamb for us, we thank you that we have this gift. Teach us to understand it and to know how to live in it. Amen. So this week I had a rather um, traumatic experience. We, three years ago, um, lightning struck the wires coming down to our house because we were down from a bluff and and, um, and it traveled through the wires and started a fire in the basement and the house burned. And the firefighters said we were very, very fortunate to get out alive and unhurt. And they even came back and got our little puppy who they thought was a stuffed animal thrown under the bed, <laughs> but they got him. And, and so, you know, we've done a lot of work. The house has been rebuilt. We've been through all of those things and we're feeling really good. And we kind of finally settled the house in after three years. And so um, I had been conscious of the fact that we were right at that time because it was the year we came back from Colorado and it was the week after. And so it's easy to remember the anniversary and uh, sleeping peacefully during the night and the alarm, the fire alert uh, alarm goes off. And I just, in one microsecond, every, every fiber of my being was just inflamed with, I shot out of bed and I went running down the hall because I had smelled the electrical burning uh, right before the smoke came billowing at us at like 90 miles an hour and it was toxic, you couldn't possibly breathe it. 
And so um, I, I went around just kind of sniffing the house and everything. Just, was there anything burning in a wall? Was there anything burning outside? About 45 minutes, the boys, our grandsons and I walked around because they were right over the fire the last time. And then we all looked at each other and we all sat down and had a little snack together, but none of us ever fell back to sleep. My husband said, what? And I said, I'm checking the house. He said, good, and he went back to sleep. But for me, it replayed all of those memories and I, I re-felt what I had felt before. And, um, and any time, by the way, if you've ever been traumatized by anything, if it comes up for you again, it's really good to take the time to work through that because you can move further away from it and you can, you can gain a lot of good ground by taking that time to work through it, so I did. And as I was working on this text for John, I was thinking a lot about these signs that Jesus gives in John. And these signs can be very startling. They can be, uh, they're not traumatic usually, they can be very startling, but just like the fire alarm did for me, it, they wake us up. They wake us up that something really important is going on right now. Pay attention, pay attention, pay attention is what that fire alarm does as it's screaming. It just this mind kind of mind uh, numbing sound is coming out. And, and these signs can do that in a very gentle way. And then once the people went through the signs, once they were fed or the water was turned to wine or these, these different signs happened, generally speaking, they, they talked about it afterwards. I mean, who would talk about being fed by a small amount of food that Jesus blesses. And Jesus himself waited on them. Jesus himself distributed. Who wouldn't wonder about that? Jesus himself calmed the sea. Jesus himself did all of these things. And so now today, today in this lesson, we have what Jesus is, is the, we, the, the, he gives the, he does the miracle, it's the sign. He says, this is a sign, and then he talks about it. There's a dialogue in between each of these in John where Jesus explains it and teaches us. And here Jesus says, pay attention. God is giving life to the world. God from heaven is giving life to the world. And this is happening because God is sending Jesus in as, as this universal Christ, for all time and for all people, not necessarily to come at us as Jesus. For instance, um, the Christ, that the Messiah, is a, there's a promise of that when the first covenant with the Jews, covenants are eternal, and now we have this covenant with Jesus for all who are not Jews who are part of that covenant. And it, it's a sign for us, pay attention, God is here. And so they talk about that, that when, when Jesus, after the people are fed, you know, and they find him, <laughs> Jesus, Jesus fled because they started talking about making him king and, and battling the Romans. And he's like, what? And Jesus himself is probably traumatized and he flees and gets to the other side by the, eventually. And, and so then when they find him again, they don't recognize him as Jesus Messiah. They say, teacher, where'd you go? <laughs> but what happens now is they talk with Jesus about this event and Jesus says the bread of life of God comes down from heaven into this world and it gives life it gives life and so they start saying well, well what's the bread you know what is this uh, Moses gave us man in the wilderness and Jesus goes oi 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 Moses didn't give you the bread God did and it was a sign that God was with you every day every day you went and picked up enough to keep you alive in a desolate wilderness and you had what you needed, and God provided it with God's hands. And so Jesus says, remember that and how it saved you and liberated you and all of the, and God forgave you and God loved you. And remember that because guess what? I am. The great tetragrammaton again, the I am of God. I am the bread of life. I am the one who gives you life that just doesn't last for a day, but this is eternal life now. And it's not only eternal life, I am the bread of life right now right now. And so my whole life is bread given for you. You know, in John, we don't have the sacrament of Holy Communion. That's only in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. In John, this is it. When Jesus gives himself, he feeds them himself. He becomes the bread that they need. And, 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 and 
he gets he's giving his whole life he's offering his whole life not just the cross thing but his whole life and that we can live with him now and to eternal life and so what the people say well what's the work that we're supposed to do how are we supposed to do this believing and and god thing and they they talk about manna and jesus says you know i am i am the manna i am the story i am the liberation and jesus says the work that you're called to do is to believe believe that jesus is the son of god to believe that jesus is the bread of life and i am that jesus i am that bread so what is believing in john it's never belief it's never the noun thing oh belief here here's my belief not at all in john it's always the verb it's always the active thing believing it means faithing it means trusting and the word actually is trust belief is not a great translation but we don't have a translation for that word from the hebrew we really don't so it's believing and it's trusting together and believing means i will stay with you on this journey jesus now i know some of you are you won't admit it perhaps but you're hallmark movie fans now if you were sitting in the congregation i had you all put your feet up and take your shoes off i could look because they sell leave me alone i'm watching hallmark socks and they were sold out when i went to order them so some of you have those socks off i just know you do but anyway this 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 hallmark this hallmark movie that i was kind of half watching i was sorting through things like i always am my husband had it on and and there was a time in one point where this man talked about believing trusting loving is a you make daily decisions to do that every day it's not a one-time thing you keep making decisions and that's what following jesus that's what believing in jesus is you're constantly making decisions well some of the folks said in our bible study this story make these dialogues make me uncomfortable did jesus really say that and that's one of those times you make a story you make a decision am i going to go with those dialogues as jesus or am i not am i going to do this action am i going to feed the poor am i going to wear my mask again doggone it we're sick of that aren't we am i going to wear that mask again because we blew it we didn't get enough vaccinations done and so this variant this thing will keep modifying and mutating until who knows when and so here we are again with these rotten masks that i hate but by golly i'm going to wear it and i'm going to try to get everybody to wear it so our vulnerable ones are safe it's not about me it's about our vulnerable ones right because in jesus we exist for the sake of others in jesus jesus died for the sake of this world jesus died for the vulnerable ones in jesus we are making that decision every single day of our lives and this is just one example i'm so proud our church really got vaccinated 100% but now we are here with these rotten masks that make skin break out and all kinds of bad things and it's hard to breathe right and so for me i have to make that decision to wear that dog on mask because i know there are others who are more vulnerable than me it's just one example of the decisions we make every day that we love jesus we believe in we are believing in jesus and we're going to try to stay on this path with him as much as we can and we don't do it all the time and believing that jesus is the bread of life is like what do you get if you believe that jesus is the bread of life what's the payoff in it well jesus says okay folks you you're born into a broken world we're all you're all broken And so Jesus has all these ways. He has these an, an infinite variety of ways to help unbreak us, to help heal us, to help forgive us, to help restore us to God, to help restore us to one another. Right now everybody's stressed because of this new variant and what's happening again and that we're going backwards. Everybody is stressed. And so our relationships get scritchy, you know? They just get scritchy. We're all kind of around you know about things. And so and so right now Right now Jesus says to you stay with me stay focused so that you can be loving and caring toward others that you can be understanding that we can talk together because it's not going to be easy right now it's a bad time it was a bad time for this community that John's speaking to that we're reading right now it was a really bad time for them and they too were dying and and bad things were happening and so right now with Jesus the meaning is what in this sign is what John is trying to say to us is that Jesus is this messenger of God Jesus is the light of the world the light no darkness can overcome 
Jesus is the very presence who was in creation from the beginning. And Jesus in, Jesus in John, we see he's using all these signs to give us an overall picture that Jesus is the presence of God. He's life for the world. He's God's life for the world now and forever. So today he's saying to you, okay, you know, check your Hallmark status here in your little movie. Are you going to keep believing? Are you going to keep make decision, making decisions to trust me? To trust me in this scritchy, scritchy time. To trust me that I am here in this world. And make decisions to love and to be light and to do what I gave you. Will you keep on with me? Will you stay the journey with me? Keep making that decision to trust me. Amen. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We invite you now to give an offering to God. Several ways we can give are to offer our time to someone struggling or provide an offering to someone in need. All done for the love of others. If you would like to support our ministry, you can give online through our website. We can and will bring hope to the world. We join together in our offertory prayer. Lord God and giver of all good gifts, we are grateful for all the blessings of life that you give to us. Daily we are fed with good things, nourished by friendship and care, feasted with forgiveness, understanding, and hope. We ask now for your blessing of our offerings to help and serve those in need. May they be a great blessing, and may the light of Jesus Christ bring hope to the world. Amen. You are welcome to join us in our closing prayer. We pray together. Dear God, thank you for new beginnings. Help us to make the most of them, not through our own strength, but through the power of the Holy Spirit that dwells within us. Wash us clean of all our sins, strengthening us to live as your children, 
loving and caring for others. To you, loving God, we lift the world and all the people who have suffered and continue to struggle with COVID-19 and this pandemic. We pray for slowing down the spread of the virus, shield and give strength to all the first responders and medical workers around the world. Keep them healthy and safe. Wrap all those who are sick and suffering in your hope, strength, and healing. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now receive the benediction that is thousand of years ago. It means ascending blessing. And that is when Moses' little brother Aaron blesses the people of Israel. And so now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the God of light, Christ who is our light, and the Holy Spirit who fills us with the light of love. Amen.